and actually making the things, talking to the customer so they learn customer service and they learn the trade, they learn it all so they'll be able to take these skills. When they when they get out to the workforce field, they won't be able to say that they don't have no experience because they do. They have experience um, running the actual business. So, And our model there is never settle for um, less when excellence is your portion. And I've recently had to tell myself that excellence is not perfection because I strive to, uh, you know, I really strive to not make mistakes, but they happen. And so it's just about uh, making it right and doing your best due diligence by the people. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. preach to us, <laughs> And um, so, and then I'm the founder, my business, I'm the founder of No More Bound. Um, that is an organization committed to seeing queens free. So empowering them to be free from the chains to seek to hold that hold them captive. Um, so I'm on Facebook, that's No More Bound uh, LLC. And I just, I, I strive to do posts daily and lives monthly but I recently launched that uh, limited liability company and I'm doing speaking life coaching event planning so I'm really encouraged to be walking out my purpose you know um, through that I've been through a lot of uh, you know low times went through a lot of uh, life circumstances but God has brought me through each and every one of them and so I'm just I'm here to say you know I survived it I made it through and you know you can too and so I wrote a book that's called Never Too Far subtitle No More Bound um, because we're never too far from where we desire to be in life so yeah that's me alright <laughs> alright amen amen, amen. You, you some good she came so, prepared so explain us about this change you want the queens to break themselves from um, it can be many different things, whether it be, you know, uh, depression, toxic relationships, uh, low self-esteem, just empowering them to be the best version of themselves and not compare themselves to other queens because we're all different. We yep. all have something very different to offer. We all look different, have a different calling, have different gifts and abilities. So it's just about, to me, um... Being your, being the very best version of yourself and loving yourself in totality, loving your flaws, loving what you've been through because it made you, you know, who you are today. Mm -hmm. um, so just, just truly being free, free from your past, free from what other people said about you, you know, free from the unrealistic expectations people placed on you. Okay, just yeah. to be you. Yeah, that's good. So I see you mentioned your past. So get in depth. What led you to this journey that you're on? You ain't got to get too, too, you know what I mean, if you don't want to person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you know, you know what you comfortable with, what you comfortable talking about, but give us like a little in that what led you to this journey, you know, because it sounds like you're doing a good job. I, I got the mom research. She don't never send me no information to the last <laughs> man. Uh, I'm trying. Um, well, when I was... And starting from, you know, high school, um, I was a teen parent, so I had my baby at the end of freshman year when I was 14, so I think it kind of started from there, and I stayed, like, in a constant cycle of toxic relationships, and so um, that's kind of what I talk about in my book, but more so on the um, divorce I entered into that was disobedient, because God told me no, and he told me no multiple times from multiple different people. He truly communicated to me that that was not what I should be doing, but I, I went with what I wanted to do, and, and, I, and I had to yeah. learn, you, you learn, know what I'm saying, the hard way. You know, you Instead of him telling me it's hot, I wanted to make sure, so, I wanted to feel that so, heat for myself. myself. That's, what, that's, that's, <laughs> the thing, that's the thing, a great thing about serving God, however you serve him, he give you the freedom of choice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you learn from that choice, and that, and them, them bad mistakes don't define you. Yeah, right. You know what right. I'm saying? So you can never, you know, I tell a lot of people, like young men I talk to, and myself also, you can't never define yourself and your mistake, and yeah. we all remember anybody. Ain't no such thing. You know we can't hear you. Kiki. Oh, I'm sorry. I swear. You, you can't have never, great you, questions. You can never define yourself on the mistakes you made. So, um, yeah, you 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 seem you seem pretty bright. So I'm I'm so. What what age limit do you uh talk to? You got certain age limit people you talk to, or? I guess whoever will receive me, mm -hmm. but um, I I kind of put a um. Uh, age limit cap on the book that I wrote. I would prefer like 16 or older people who are getting out of high school to read it because it's, it's a little transparent, you know, and I don't mm -hmm. mind being transparent. That's why I told God I'll be transparent you know, because some people just want to know my business, but I do it for your glory, you know because to be relatable to the people, to let people know. You know, people always show their this is where I am now, but don't ever show where, where, they, came they, from. where they came from and what it really took for them to be where they are today, you know, so I, I haven't arrived. I'm still striving, you know Mm -hmm, but um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i um 
I'm just a believer that um, God works everything together for the good of those who love him. And he truly, you know, he truly did that for me. That's good. Amen. Another good book you should read, I think you should read, is Susie Burt, Find, You Find a Miss Burton. It's a good book. It sounds like you're on the same path that she on. So, um... Uh, does she know who Susan Burton is? Do you know who Susan Burton is? It sounds familiar. She Please was, don't judge me. No, no, no. no, no it's not judgment zone. Okay. No, no, no. If, <laughs> if you judge me, I'll be off this show. <laughs> yeah, Susan Burton came down here over the summer. summer. She, she, yes, over the summer. She uh, from California, is Los Angeles. Yeah, Los Angeles, California. She a, a young lady that she went through some very tough trial and tribulation, and she wrote a book. And she got uh, halfway houses and stuff. She really, she really international, nationally known now. And she helped women that been to drug abuse, physical abuse, been to prison, help them find ways to connect with their children. She got a, a big, a big movement going on. She a very inspirational woman. And some things that you touched on, I think you guys relate to each other real well. So, what else I want to ask you? So you got to give me the question. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry, but I just wanted people to understand so you, and, and know who Susan Burton for, is. She did the, uh, she has a women transitional yeah, house. Yeah, transitional house. Yeah, yeah all so. that. She got all that. She helped women come home from prison. She uh, set them up, and she had a, a, a very hard journey, too, and she got very in-depth. And you mentioned about people do want to know your business, because they just, it's, it, mm -hmm. you got, you, we live in a world of parrots. Mm, you know explain what I'm saying? that. Y'all you know, know what a parrot is, don't y'all? <laughs> Right, they mimic you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So a person might not know you personally, right? And they might hear what somebody else say about you, and that's how they judge you. That's mm -hmm. how that's how most people that's, judge. Mm -hmm. That's how most people judge people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They know and, you before you. Yeah, they know but you. but they don't even know yeah. nothing about yeah. you. Right. I can take you know what I'm saying. So you right. People do want to know your business, but don't let them run your business. Right. That's you know, good. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> people will get get like you, a young sister that's trying to strive. You got people that. Don't, you don't even know they want to bring you down. Just my, well, she probably still knows. I don't know nothing about you, so I can't say, you know, like I said, I'm, I don't judge nobody. Cause I By her looks I probably, alone, you know, you, yeah. She'll alone. get some haters, period. Look, yeah, 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 all y'all beautiful women get haters. You know what I mean? So you have to learn to not understand what people are saying about you because most times it's negative and they want right. to be in your shoes. Right. And they want to keep you on the level that they on. Mm -hmm. But... Define more about your religion, belief, God. I see you talk a lot about God, and what you a Christian or a Jehovah I mean, Witness? I, <laughs> no, I must ask. I don't know because you got Jehovah Witnesses, Christians. You know, we got so, other yeah religions. Yeah, in yeah. The I believe, house I believe too. Islam, Islam is a, I'm more American. So, what puts you on a journey with God? Um, he yeah, he snatched me up, but I I, I believe in I'm believing in Jesus Christ, um, but. I um I li I was raised in Chicago in like my teen years, and I came back here to go to Parkland, and I came back with a guy from Chicago. He was beating on me, y'all. I wore black eyes like it was clothes, like it was ridiculous. I'm serious. I said you made yourself. I ain't trying to lie. <laughs> I'm just saying I can laugh about it now. I'm cool. You know I've been through it. I overcame that thing. But you know like. That's what I went through, and, and, you know, and so I started, my friend, my roommate, she kept on inviting me to church. I'm like, girl, ain't nobody thinking about God for real. You know, I'm not, I'm not on that, but when I got in the church, you know, he just, it was just interesting because every time I went to church, like he had, he just had people individually ministering to me every single time. So he, you know, he said, in love and kindness do I draw them in, not, you need to put on a longer skirt because I wore them little mini skirts I didn't care nothing about. You know what I'm saying? I was just young and didn't really love myself. But he really, he really showed me an agape love, a love that don't ever feel, a love that isn't moved by what I did and what I came from. And even what I was in, he loved me to say that you deserve better, daughter. You know, Amen. and it was interesting. One time I was sitting at the kitchen table, you know, and I was in a situation because it wasn't no relationship, you know. Here we go. And, um, <laughs> don't, don't start Because you didn't have one and, or two. <laughs> and I, and I heard God say to me audibly, this is the first time, like, I really heard him say something to me. He said, let me love you. And I just broke down in tears. It's like, you're right, because I've been looking for love in him and them and in this place. But it's like, you are the definition of love. Like, I can find everything that I need in you, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, the journey started with me just really going to church here when I came back from school. And, and for him, just when when he opened the doors, he ain't, he ain't let me go, you know. Yeah. When I got in there, that was his opportunity to grab hold to me. So, yeah. So, uh, you, you right. mentioned love. A lot of people don't understand love, right? 
A lot, a, lot, a lot of people, a friend of mine, she wrote a poem about love. Okay. I ain't gonna say no name, but oh I, I like it. God. The poem, the, no, I'm He's serious. Look at you. <laughs> look at you. Uh, look, the poem, but the poem was deep though. The poem, that's a heck of a poem. I, I advise everybody going Heather Rose page. Oh, I'm serious. That, that's that's she, that, she, that she was one of the rawest poems I ever heard in my life. Serious, dealing with love, but also see people don't know love and infatuation is the same. And I got to, yeah. But the difference between love, the different is all the things she said love did to her, love don't do that to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, love don't destroy you. Mm -hmm. right. Love don't beat you down. Right. Love don't hurt you. Right. Love don't make you unforgiving. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying infatuation mm -hmm. does all that thing. But when you infatuate with something, your mind is like tunnel vision. Right. So you don't see the signs that, like you say, God was throwing at you. Mm -hmm. you know, he's throwing all these signs. Mm -hmm. But when you get tunnel vision on, on a road or something, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I see your eyes are open. Oh, I'm trying. I was. I was. I, I'm trying to get my. Face. So are, are are you, are you like, just the Bible thumper, or are you just? I'm not a Bible thumper. I'm just asking. I'm, I'm just asking. <laughs> no, it's funny because my daughter got an Alexa for Christmas, mm -hmm. and I was being funny, and because we asking her a thousand questions, and I'm like, "Who is Jesus?" And she was like, um, "I don't know about religion." And I'm like, it's not religion. He's a person. It's spirituality. It's about relationship. Oh, you you been read. You've been reading a little bit. Huh? <laughs> so I am not a Bible thumper. I just, what's in me will come out. And he has been here. You know what I'm saying? He ain't moved. People was like, I love you. I'll be there for you. But they don't answer the phone. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Or I got you whenever you need something. But when I'm hungry, you don't got to play the food for me when I'm mm -hmm. feeding you and your, your whole household. You know what I'm saying? So um, I talk about God because I have to have to give him the glory. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I say, if y'all don't believe in God, I just look just look back at my life look where I came from Amen. and recognize that it was not by my strength it was not I wasn't no good good person like so what made me change who mm -hmm. is who made me change you yeah. feel me so yeah so you understand the difference between your spirit your soul and your flesh then I do because you mentioned spirituality a lot so you stay in your spirit most of the time or you live in your flesh most of the time Lord, I try I try to walk in the spirit, you know. Yeah, that's all we can do. But I mean we're human beings, yeah. right? And so mm -hmm. you know what they say, um, be so heavenly bound, you know, earthly good, right? So I still try to um, you know, I'm not perfect, no. you know. So um I still try to be I just try to be the best person I can be and if I can be transparent for real, like I really try to show God's love to other people. So I have time at home where we talk about it's funny, but we have our petty time. We have a song for it and everything because we talk about the different situations we've been through that day. Well, that person, that was, that situation was a little petty or the way they looked at me or what they said to me, that was a little petty. We ain't going to bring it to them, you know what I'm saying, because that's not who we are. But we can, you know what I'm saying, we can be ourselves among people we love, you know, and then we can we can heal ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. just like that without, you know, externally showing the hurt to other people. Yeah, because you got to heal yourself before yeah. you heal anybody else. Yeah. Because if you're not healed within yourself, you're not healed. Right. You know, you can put up a side up all the time. Like, I had a conversation with a young lady the other day. My home girl. I can't say her name because she'll get mad. Yeah, you right. Oh. Talk a little bit in the mic, Kiki. Oh, what are you like trying to front me <laughs> off? so comfortable. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, you got to you, you you understand the difference, like you said, between the spirit and your soul. A lot of people don't understand the, between the spirit because your soul is just, is just there. Your soul going to go off wherever you feed it. You can feed it the flesh. You can speed, feed it the spirit. So your soul is like a neutral. It's like the neutral. You understand what I'm saying? I do. So when you say healing, you have to heal yourself. That's true because if you don't heal, your, heal yourself, you no good to yourself. And the main mm -hmm. thing is you got to know thyself. Yeah. I always say that. Yeah. So yeah. If, you don't, if you don't know who you are and what you're capable of, capable of you, won't, you don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. So tell us about what you think about this violence and Oh, I ain't going to talk about R. Kelly. R. Kelly, my dog. Okay, no oh, we're going to talk uh, about no, we that later. Y'all ain't going to dog R. Kelly. R. Kelly's still my dog. I don't care what y'all say about it. But we anyway, so anyway, bit. so, so what you what you think about this, all this stuff that's going on in the world and champagne? Like, it's been a lot of shooting champagne in the last week. There has been. 
Yeah. I mean, it deeply saddens me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was living in Chicago when I moved and got married in the Northwest suburb. And um, my daughter used to go to Booker T. Washington. And she said she wanted to go back there. And I was trying to bring her back some familiarity so she'd get back, you know, comfortable with us moving. But, you know, when I heard, I heard the school was shut down because of shootings in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of where she go, or where she used to go. And I'm like, God, you know, but I, I gave her back to him and he'll protect her. But I was just like, it was, it hurt me because it's like, you know, I'm always like, well, Champagne is a great place to raise your children. You know, it's, you know, it's low key. Key. Everybody hates champagne because ain't nothing popping. I'm fine with nothing popping because I make you know life is what you make it. You yeah. know, so oh, yeah. I Most enjoy mine. But um, it's sad because I feel like ain't nobody doing nothing, and don't nobody. It don't seem as if anybody care for real. Like it's like okay, we can talk about it, but but what are we gonna do for real? And I'm not gonna say that I have the energy or the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, there's someone in Chicago. Um, Brother Gaines, I believe, but he is out there like um, he made like a neighborhood watch with his pe with with the black brothers, the males. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And he made a neighborhood watch with them, and he he uh, you know was talking about how to support blacks and to buy into blacks and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. who is going to protect us but ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if y'all recently saw that uh, social media um, post of the young lady at McDonald's. The white man reached yeah, over her yeah, she and she snapped. had to fight back. Yeah. And everybody was like super proud of her, you know, that she protected she, I'm herself. I'm about that. What'd she say? Right. She, did, she said she about that life, right? Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. But it bothered me because there was men around there. Yeah, that, it was that, sad. That, that, that bothered me deeply. And then the fact that the manager still took the man order, like, who is going to protect the black woman? You feel me? It's like, it's mm. like even though I don't know y'all like that, if somebody is, if a man is attacking me, like, even if I'm about that life, like, like, are y'all gonna have me or y'all just gonna keep it moving? This right. ain't none of my business. Like, at what point are we gonna make people, and not to be a burden onto ourselves, but at what point are we gonna make their problems our problems? At what point are we gonna carry them? You know, so it it hurts, but it's like, I mean, what are we gonna do? Are we scared to take ministry to the streets? Like, are we scared to reach the young people in the streets because they're disrespectful? I mean, when are we gonna take our authority back? You know, so I mean, um, I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be done, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I feel like it takes, you know, um, leadership to really want to do something. You know, yes. church ain't just yes. in the four walls, and we always talk about it. Church is going out into your communities and making it better. So. Yes, most definitely. I can I can agree to that. Um, I feel the same way on um, after uh, lunch get um get killed i really wanted to like take a what is those little things you call and you start yelling into it the microphone the um, megaphone yeah, i was going to like literally go find one and get one and hit up bradley and just walk up and down in front of the street and just try to protest been, on my own by myself you've been like, silly party it's, it's lit crazy. like literally it doesn't it doesn't even matter i'm my own person and all i need is to do is just march by myself yeah. That's and right. I know people will follow me, but at the same time, I'm so overwhelmed with so much hurt and pain from the streets of Champaign alone that I'm just tired of all of the crap that people like put into these streets. You know, I'm I'm so sick and tired of what's going on as far as like my my daughter and my son and my nieces and my cousin at my house right right now watching crazy Netflix movies live well, videos of violence you know and that's what they're doing all day every day so i mean i know we can come together we can uh unify um this is the main reason why we're talking about these issues on the radio and why we go live every saturday is to let people know that we are aware we're conscious about what's going on in the brown community i'm tired i know kiki tired I know Ariel tired. I know Mr. Tiger is tired. Mm -hmm. I know we all are tired. So eventually we need to at least come together and come up with something. I know there's someone out there that can at least stand up and do all this work or do enough work. 
you know, because we only have so many people that are very, like, active mm -hmm. in Champaign-Urbana, yeah. but they're overwhelmed yeah. with all these hats. So we need more people to step up. We need more younger people to step up. And I'm going to start trying to do that, you know, influence more people to, hey, step up. Stop trying to video record all these smackings and beat-ups and beat-downs. Mm -hmm. It's not right, mm -hmm. you yeah, know? that's true. So... Good thing, Heather. That was my next question. Heather brought up. Uh, what is your thoughts on the youth? Because you look young, so you probably can adapt to. Because you know, I ain't trying to figure your age out. Man. <laughs> so if I ain't trying to insult you, not. But you probably you you look young. And what is your thoughts on the youth and the mental awareness out here with the youth? What's going on with the youth and their their mental state? Well, as far as the black community, it's still um, a stigma attached to mental health and mental health services. Um, you know, a lot of times they only say that's, a, you know, that's a white people thing. And I think that's the issue. You know, um, we talk about awareness, but we don't bring it home. You know, so it's like, are we seeking these for our children and for our neighbors and for our community at large. Like we can't just talk about something and then not be about it. You know, and so I um I'm I'm in counseling, honey, and um, you know, I take my daughter and um she's like, Ain't nothing wrong with me, mama. Don't nothing have to be wrong with you. You you good. We are okay to be able to talk to professionals and tell them what they dealing with. It's too heavy. It's too heavy for you to sit up there and try to deal with it on your own. And just like when you said you would go out in the streets by yourself, I know you would. But that even bothered me. Like, because that's all it, it's just more weight on the black woman. Mm -hmm. That's all it feel like to me. It, and then it's the, you know, it's the, um, the superwoman syndrome we got. We ha have to do everything with excellence all the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? So you want me, you know, I have to get out to the streets because y'all not fin too. But at the same time, I got to still make sure my daughter eat. I got to make sure she good mentally. You feel me? Serving in ministry. You know what I'm saying? You pouring into all these different outlets. And then you like, and then you sitting up here. What do I have for myself? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, in regards to the youth, I, Preach. we don't have a lot of black educators. Um, and I think uh, representation is an issue in the school. And so mm -hmm. if only white people is telling them you need to do this, that, and the other, and if they don't have relationship with them, they are not going to reach them. You know, I used to work at Jefferson. I call myself the mama of Jefferson because, you know, when them, them kids was acting up, I was treating them like they was my own kids. I'm going to, t we have to, you know, like I said, take our authority back. I'm fine with telling you about yourself. You don't have to like me in that moment, but you're going to be right back, Miss Ariel. Hey, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to correct you and I'm going to get you right. You know what I'm saying? Because we got eyes everywhere. We need to be a village. You know what I'm saying? And when I left Jefferson to go start my internship, I was like, you know, who gonna look out for my baby? Who gonna look out for my baby like I've been looking out for everybody else's babies when I'm gone? I'm just saying. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And so, in regards to the youth, I feel like, um, we need to be able to, if if we teach them how to deal with their anger and their sadness and their loneliness and their emptiness, they will be more healthy people equipped to, you know, be, um, to live in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, um, their uh, su suicides are on the rise. Oh, yeah. For young people. And why is that? You know what I'm saying? Why is that? We're telling them that, you know, and Jesus is my Lord, but we're telling them just go to Jesus. Like, that's it. Like, there's no action behind it. Like, there's mm -hmm. nothing that we mm -hmm. need to do on our own. Yes. Jesus can do anything at any time, but at the same time, he's requiring from us. Yes. You know, there's action that needs to be behind us. So, you know, um, oh, I love my babies. I adore them, but I can't do it by myself, you know. And, and, and we have to get to the stuff that we don't want to talk about, you know what I'm saying. And I'm very... Uh, fond of my daughter and I feel like we have a great relationship but I check her and I'll get into her and so I feel like there needs to be a balance you know you can't just want to discipline the kids but don't have no relationship that they're not finna listen to you period you know so um it's important their mental health is extremely important and we put you know more importance on their physical health than their mental health when if their mental is off balance it's not gonna matter how their body doing you mm -hmm. know yes. so um I think I think it should be on us as authority figures to, you know, tell them how important it is and, you know, try to be available to them. Because I, I said one thing to God, I said, God, I would hate if I'm in ministry pouring into your people and my baby's at home bound. 
and my babies at home dealing with things. You know what I'm saying? Allow me to discern when things are going on with them, when I need to be more available for them, you know. And so I think it's about uh, just all us adults having a balance. I know we do so much, but us having a balance and, and to make that priority because it should be. Mental health, spirituality is very, very important for them to thrive. Yeah, give answers. All right, you on <laughs> Okay, so Brian, you say, you know, all you that. You know, you got to talk in the mic. <laughs> you should get these mics together. <clears throat> you said that, that was good. That was a good answer. You know, you, you hit it right to the T. You didn't sugarcoat, you didn't sugarcoat nothing because you, right, it's mental health. And you don't got to be crazy to have mental health issues. Right. A lot of people don't understand that mental health can come from all type of things. Just living in a dysfunctional house, mm-hmm. seeing dysfunctional things that you think is normal. You see your mom and daddy drinking and fighting all the time. Right. Just looking at society, thinking just this case somebody make you mad. It's hard to go shoot them or, you know, any more fighting these days. Or mental health go a lot of way besides being crazy and right. bipolar. Right. And once you can entertain that thought in them children that certain things is not okay that cause we always raised raised like that like somebody hit you hit them back it's a little thing i seen on youtube little, little kid say what's his name little johnny black my eye uh bully awareness I, I gotta pull it up but but yeah so how can we bring unity and the uh attention to get these children to deal with this mental health awareness issue your thought it's just your thoughts no um I think in order to bring unity, um, we can we can um, pour into the youth um, because we all we all love our babies regardless of what mental state we are. We all love our babies, so if we come together for one central focus, you know, to um, up, uphold our youth, uplift and empower our youth, I feel like more people will be down for the cause. I mean, I don't know who would necessarily. Um, it takes everybody, you know, and I don't know um, what it would take for us to um, unify as a people, you know what I'm saying, because society would have it, you know, that black people are always fighting, always against each other, always stabbing each other in the back. It's always cat fights and, you know, comparing and everything else. Um, but that's, we, I feel like one person at a time, we can show them different, you know, and, and that's, that's what I feel like our, my one of my purposes is, is that um, to truly love a queen in, a, in the place that she in for who she is, you know what I'm saying, and to show, to show her that it's okay, you know, and it's okay if somebody, you know, is successful, and it's okay to, if you're laboring or whatever the case may be, to uplift them and help them and help them with their children, you know what I'm saying, so it's like we have to be, be willing to sacrifice. We have to be willing to sacrifice for the people um, in order for our lives to um, be better. I tried to, or I did, I put on a Kwanzaa celebration. I mm-hmm. thought it would be bigger. Um, but you tell her who you came to support? So I will next year. Yes, please. Because um, um, I think you you invited me, but I think I was just coming back from my vacation. You should not tell me nothing. You should, you should come to First Fallers. I think you be a great asset with us. But I know this. My mouth is right wide open. Be quiet. Hey, you get on she, my she nerves. Anyway, well, no, hold on, hold on, it's hold on. WRFU. You are now tuned in to Conscious Community <laughs> Connections. All right. This is an open forum for Urbana Champagne in our online community. Views expressed are those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU, UC, IMC, or Urbana Socialist Forum. I had to cut them off. I'm sorry, Kiki. Are you, are you, are you all right? So I noticed, you know, I noticed. You always mention the queen. Uh-huh. So what about your king? I ain't talking about your relationship. I'm talking about the kings of men. What about the men? That is so funny that you said that. What about the men? Tell you why? Yeah, tell, please tell me why. Cause you don't give us no. You don't give us I no do, credit. I do. I, I can't. Do. I ain't heard nothing yet. Okay. Well, let me let me talk. Yeah, let break me it tell down. you why. Right? Please do. Um. It's a Malcolm X quote, and that's why I said it. It well something similar that it was the black woman is the least protected the least respected i don't know how he put it but there's no one and and it was in that situation like what i talked to you about mcdonald's there was all the men right there why is she ever even having to put her hands on him she said the quote that she said was who else gonna do it 
know what I'm saying, and her co-workers, you know what I'm saying, and I'm not saying, because I'm sure we all like, well, I could lose my job, this is my money, but all this stuff running through our minds, but it's like, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, our kings are our protectors, right, and so, um, I'm saying the reason why I put so much weight on queens is because I want them to know who they are, okay. because we have been, you know, we have been exploited for our bodies, and if we only sexual people, and we're only good for pleasing people, you know, pleasing males or whatever the case may be, we're only good for raising babies, we're only good for putting, you helping a man, you know, get farther in life, and then once he's straight, he gonna drop us. No, and I'm not trying to say it like that, that but drop us for the said, white woman. I'm just talking. Said. I'm just talking. I'm just Let talking. Let her talk. <laughs> 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 I, I, I put so much emphasis on queens is because we are talked to in so many other ways, but as royalty. And that's how I feel. And so I feel like if I continuously say it over and over and over again, um, they will believe it, we will believe it for ourselves, and we will start treating ourselves as royalty. And then we will raise our young queens as royalty. And this is not to be tolerated. And they are not to talk to you like that. And they should feel privileged to even be in your presence, to even speak your name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, agree. I, I agree. I just I don't know what you got against the mail. I just don't, I don't play about my women. I just want to know what you got against the mail. Because, like, oh, I'm, I got to cut you off because... <laughs> Because listen, no you keep, no, because she keep mentioning this, this YouTube thing, right? Like, I can pull up, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can pull up some on YouTube also that it was a guy in Florida. Uh huh. This oh, lady, the lady was in Walmart parking lot. Uh huh. And this Caucasian man was attacking her. Brother cheated. Then the brother came over there and protected her. That's what I'm talking about. But you, but you, but you keep saying that there's nothing out there. No, it's oh, the, let me finish. Go ahead. And he came over and he protected her. Mm hmm. He didn't know her from Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. He saw a man, a Caucasian man, trying to attack his pregnant woman, his sister. Wow. He came over there and pulled his gun out sure and told did. him, if you touch her, I got something for you. I know that's so right. So we, 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 so, we so busy. It's like it's like the news. The news will show you Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Some parts of Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And know, know, they, know what they're going to show you? Like the movie, they're going to show you the in poverty, yeah. uh, everybody yeah. living like this. Yeah. But it's so much nice things the, over there yeah, and you yeah. actually go visit or do your own research it's there so people only show you what they want you to show and what you, they want you to mimic mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. at the same time mm -hmm. you got men out there i know a lot of men that protect women i wouldn't let nobody i wouldn't let nobody jump on a woman like i had friends that jumped on women and i broke it up they they women i don't like getting to like husband and boyfriend but i'm like man don't do that right now man like that, and I know I know God, and I got a lot of homies that won't, won't let you touch a woman in front of them. So it's like I understand what you're saying, but when you portray a picture, because you seem you seem very intelligent, you know what I'm saying. So your word speaks volume. So you got to be fifty fifty with it, because you just explaining the situation like men. Cause I you, hear you. You didn't say some men. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? So, you say, oh, I'm going to let you get Mike right back one second. So you got to say, I'm, I'm ready, I know you're ready to go. So I, 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 I ain't ready to go. Dang. But, but you, got some, you got some men that's like that. So, you, you know, right. like, don't bash us all. I'm not bashing. It's, I'm just using the word. Well, just don't give up on all of us. Because you got some men out there that do protect their women. I know a lot of men don't let you cuss at their woman or around their I woman. know that's so right. So take the mic and break down what you got to say. <laughs> so I just want to say this. It's like, pro, like they have to explain all the time, pro-black is not anti-white, right? And so I'm very pro Queens, it's not that I'm anti king, and it's funny because God had dropped it in my spirit on my own Facebook page. I address everybody as queens, that's typically my fault, that's my audience is the queens. Um, but I did make a video to my kings that I do salute you and I do love you, and I won't give up on the black man, you know. And, and I said, through everything that I've been through, and it's been with black men, um, I'm still not, I'm gonna marry a black man, I'm gonna have black love, I am gonna have a black man that love me properly. Um, so I'm not giving up on y'all I, I do honor y'all I just you know I know I, I know I have a ministry to my queens that's all that is and um it's just really interesting that you said that because in my book um I talked about a situation where I was outside of my house and it was my birthday and um I was a teenager but my boyfriend he was beating up on me mm -hmm. on my birthday in mm -hmm. front of my baby and um it just really blesses my soul every time because God did it but he sent 
you know how they say a ram in the bush and it was like 12 it was it was a gang of black men that ran him off See? And that allowed me, you know what I'm saying, to, it. you know, my birthday, it was over with by then, you know what I'm saying, but they protected me and they didn't even know me, See? you know what I'm saying. And so what I'm saying is pro-queen is not anti-king, it's just that, you know what I'm saying, they have, we have to, you know, we have to stand up, it, the weight is on us, you know what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, and, and, and again, I salute my black males, but it's like, um, society puts so much weight on us and we feel yeah, that's, responsible that, that's true. for yeah. so much. And so it's like when these killings and stuff are going on, like, like I be really mourning, you know what I'm saying? Like they, my sons, you know? Um, but I just, um, I feel like I have to encourage my Queens cause maybe the Kings ain't listening to me anyway. How you know? <laughs> man, Tiger listening, man, man, Tiger listening right now. Because no, you right though. I think it's, I think our sisters and Queens that you call them, Cause they are queens, mm -hmm. kings and queens and stuff like that. But y'all got to be strong. Yeah. Like I was telling my my daughter, she to my she ready. I said you can't give up because you got to teach your child not to give up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And 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 a, a brother need a strong woman behind them. Yeah. I ain't talking about strong like in the workforce or I'm talking about a strong mentally like mm -hmm. supportive mm -hmm. that understand that got a strong understanding. To help her brother, help a man be there and realize the faults we got. Cause the biggest thing in the world is temptation. Yeah. And it's easy to fall to temptation. It is. It is. And we need to help each other. Exactly. You feel you know me? What I'm and that's the thing. We're not helping each other. We're not helping one another. The brown community is suppressed, depressed, and everything else that people speak about our community in which they're the outside, you know, and they're looking in. So they need to understand that, hey, we are still here. We are still one. We are still doing things, and we are coming together to be unified yeah. in this community. So we need to help one another. That's the one thing we need to do. We need to communicate, and we need to be aware. Those are the two main things that I keep telling people is communication, for one, and being aware. I tell a lot of my um, my students who I used to, you know, teach or whatever. And then I tell the people that I'm around more than anything, be aware mm -hmm. with what's going on right now, inside, outside, everything. Because I heard on one of the podcasts or something, um, I think it was E.T., Eric Thomas. He was saying that his main thing was he was afraid. And then it was his emotions that was holding him back and he never really like addressed those emotions. He never was aware or never wanted to be aware of those emotions. So some of these men are out here not aware of their emotions or suppressing those emotions when, hey, you're human too. You know, yeah. we are all human. You can cry, you can be a baby in your girl's arms. It doesn't really matter, is. you know. As long as you uh, are aware of what's going on inside and out. And that's what people need to do just be aware be yeah. aware what other questions you got kiki I, let me your question. Huh? No. was we at the end no we no, at the end question. almost so, so break 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 it down because we talked about the youth and the violence you don't want to not yet I mean, not yet not yet so um you talked about your book mm -hmm. um you talked about um both of your oh yeah where where can we find your um information give us whatever so um i'm on facebook for my babies and me tees also for no more bail um and they both have websites um, my babies and me tees it's just my babies and me tees com and no more bail where you can find my book that's no more bail llc dot com um, okay okay yeah so your tees your are basically religious tees or you do it all I'm not a religious person. What? I, I, but, um, are you right? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Hey, I like that direction. Get it together now. Are your no, um, they're, they're custom t-shirts. Okay. So, um, yeah, when I did my launch, I did around Mother's Day. So, I did a lot of mama things mm -hmm. and father things so they can um, get them. But they, um, it's just a variety of different things. So, you're going to have to check me out. So, what, what, <laughs> I, I, like, I like that. What made you understand the difference between spirit, asking, and religion? Religion keep you bound. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so before Jesus came, we was under 
You mess with me. God dang, <laughs> Kiki. Uh, it was up there Jesus perfect. Came, we was under the letter of the law, so we was under the laws. And I think they had, it was hundreds of laws. It wasn't just the Ten Commandments. And so um, Jesus said he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And so um, it's not for us to not strive to be a holy uh, people, to be like God is, but it's to not... Um, Con condemn ourselves, you know, because there's so many things that we were supposed to, uh, there were so many laws that we were supposed to abide to that it was impossible, that we would always fall short, and we'd probably always be in a place of grief and sorrow, like, God, I, you know, God, I forsake you, God, I, you know, sinned against you, I sinned against your people, and so, um, my difference is, is that Jesus freed me, you know, when man would say, well, you know what you used to do. You know, a lot of people like to bring up your past and what you used to mm -hmm. and not how, how God liberated you and freed you from your past, you know, and, and how he specifically chose you because of your past, because of your relatability, because of your experience. Um, so um, freedom. Freedom taught me the difference between religious and spirituality. Yeah, that's good. Well, you know what? You know, when people always try to bring your past, that means you're doing something good. Mm. Yeah. That's what they say. That's yeah. the truth. Yeah. The truth don't need no support. One thing about the truth, the truth ain't going to never change. That's good. So when somebody's trying to bring your past, they know you you rise into a level that you're supposed to be. And, yeah. And you're leaving them, you leaving them in the, in the, in the Desmond Crips or they, or they destruction. And they want you to stay there with them. But that's the only way they can feel successful. Yeah. By bringing you back down. So if you, if you rise up, they gonna fall. Yeah. So, My hope is that when I rise, I keep pushing people with me. Yeah, to that's continue. A good you got all you got all the right answers. But I'm see. just saying, I'm not you know, I know when you get higher, they say it's like the pyramid. You just when you get higher, you just up there by yourself, you know. And there's times I had to be isolated, but I just, you know what I'm saying, when one person make it, we all supposed to make it. We all supposed to, you know, make the way and make other opportunities for our people. It's not we're not supposed to be a greedy a greedy people. A person that we supposed to be a people that you know encourages others to to reach their level that they're supposed to be. All right, hold on. Yeah. Good old Mike Tang. We're gonna get you over here. So I I just want to touch a little bit on um what's your okay I have two like questions or some clearing up follow okay. through type of thing. So um can you give me like um what the end with the entrepreneurship, um, did it take you um, a long time to establish this thing? Is it an easy thing to do? Um, give me your take on, you know, entrepreneurship, and then give me something that you're going to be doing for the future in that, you know, aspect. Okay. Um, no, y'all, don't ever think it's easy. Um, but your dreams are worth it, you know. Um, I, I like I said, I, I started my business because really on the mindset of financial literacy, stability, freedom, so that, you know, my babies could learn and we all don't have to be in debt and have bad credit scores. And we can, some of us can, we can be really financially independent and stable. Um, but it took me about... Um, I maybe researched for like six months on everything we needed, like the heat press and the different, you know, um, I got a cameo. Some people get the circuit, but I just, I took a, we took a long time to research before I even bought anything. And then when I did buy everything, it was sitting there for like six months. I was so discouraged because I spent all this money and I couldn't figure out how to work it. I couldn't, you know, I didn't feel like I was going to be successful in anything. And then it's like, you know, then I really put some time in. I really put my mind to it. And then, you know, everything I made, we gifted it to people. And so that's what our, um, that's what the business started. We started off gifting whatever we made because we know, I mean, it was elementary and we still growing, you know what I'm saying? Because we just had our launch in May. So now not even a year yet but um i i am a believer that you you sow what you reap you know and um and so I was fine with, I'm always fine with giving and being generous in that aspect. But um, if you want to be in business, like, do your research, put in your time, um, don't become discouraged and reach out to people who are doing, 
the same things that are you that you are doing i have another cra crafter out here tawana um you know and i talk to her a lot and and we help each other we pour into each other we do similar things but it's like it doesn't matter we're not in competition you know we all have a different clientele we all you know put a different flair to whatever we're doing you know what i'm saying and i'm just encouraged to be able to pour into another queen and that she can help me as well um but so i think in totality it took me about a year to actually launch and i'm still you know learning um I'm still learning the trade and everything, um, but I did, you know, file the papers to become a sole proprietor and everything, and so that's why I'm really particular about everything I do, and, you know, and just about my brand, you know, I deny people, um, like, I had to deny a couple people and what they wanted to be done because that didn't speak to my brand, the brand, you know, our logo is me and my baby's faces, and um, mm -hmm. shout out to my graphic designer, Delandis Beck, um, he does, like, all my work for me, but he was like, what is important to you? to capture in the logo mm -hmm. and don't have nothing to do with the business but I said our hair you know and so you know my hair was flat iron but my god babies it was in dreads and my daughter's was in her her little fro ponytail but that's mm -hmm. important to me black black babies black queens in business you know what I'm saying I brand with excellence um so um I would encourage anybody you know it don't matter if you don't have the money to do it. You know what I'm saying? Just write the vision. Make it plain. And, you know, God will carry out what he has placed in you. It's placed in you for a reason. You desire to do it for you, for a reason. And some people, you know, sometimes when God gives you something, you're the only one who can carry it out like he gave it to you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so in regards to my future, um, I hope to one day be in a place uh, with my babies and me tease that I can... Um, be able to do entrepreneurship workshops because I don't want it to be as difficult for other people as it was for me because I felt that there was a lack of support. Um, there was a lack of support in <clears throat> the market that I was actually doing and, and just with people, you know, I tell people just come over and help me. I'll pay you. And when nobody trying to help, when nobody trying to help me make it, and um, that's okay though, you know, because you know sometimes you have to do things all by your lonesome and just to know that the only person that was with you was God. So my hope is for my babies and me tease to be able to create a non for profit branch that teach other young black people about entrepreneurship and you know it doesn't have to be what we do, but I want to help them get to where you know they want to be um for no more bound eventually i would like to market my book a little more i'm a little scary i did my book signing but um there you know god had me to write it for a reason i saw the, so there's more people that i know that he wants me to reach um so i um i'm gonna i'm gonna get out there this year and um put some footwork in um i don't have no manager i'm my own man i'm my own everything everything <laughs> <laughs> so uh <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna have to talk to you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's why he—he the man, talking to man. He on. So, uh, I, I think I missed it. Okay, What's the name of your book again? Never too far. Never too far. Yeah. Well, like I said, you you keep this attitude and that great spirit you got going on, you're gonna be very successful. Thank you. I appreciate. You know, you just gotta keep that spirit up. Now, like you say, never let nobody pull you down yeah. and keep that spirit. Yeah. But also, when you you still gifted, I, I take free things. <laughs> I, heard you, I love I, to be a blessing. Okay, well, I, I, and my babies and me tease, we we tithe. You know that's important to me. So we do ten percent mm. goes to charity. Well, I, I'm talking about give me a free t-shirt. What, what you want? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you after the show. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I heard really? gifted and a book. I read the book. Oh uh, you know, I can read the book. And, you know, I'm finna jump in here, y'all. Yeah, that's the man right <laughs> here. Yeah. Hey. Nothing can put me under the boot. How you doing there? Good. Yeah, how are you? Man, I'm sitting back there. I've been applauding you back there. You got some awesome answers. Uh, I do yep. t-shirts, art, all that stuff too. So Hold on, she did. What about your future? Did you tell <laughs> us about your future? Yeah, yeah. we, we going there. Yeah. We want to go there. Yeah. But okay. I wanted to get more into. She hit up on some things, man. One of the things she hit up on is that you don't about the healing process, and you don't necessarily have to. Well, uh, or we have to. We need to change this concept of you have to. Something is mentally wrong with you, in order to go seek out some type of healing yeah. or counseling. How would you? How would you think we should change that? Like, what? What do you think we should do to change that concept in our community? How, how can we start? You know, and and I'm coming from the same place as you are. A lot of places. Uh, 
But how how would we start that whole concept of seeing this thing different in your eyes? What do you think? I, I feel like if we just lead by example, you know, and that's what I, I tried to, you know, do with my, my daughter. And that's, you know, she, like I told you, she said, you know, nothing was wrong with her. And I said, if nothing less, I have taught her how to seek out help. You know what I'm saying? Even if she didn't feel like she got anything from the little group she went to, hopefully when she get older, she don't want to reach out to mama. You know what I'm saying? She know that there are resources available in her community. So I feel like being an example and just talking about it more, you know, and stop shutting these black babies down. Oh, you're not depressed. You'll be okay. Right. Get over it. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Ain't, right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's like... You know, ain't nothing going on in your world, and it don't matter how young they is. Like, whatever is important in their moment, in right. their life, it's important to them, you know. And so we have to, I, putting, putting more weight on, on these babies' concerns and, and you know what I'm saying, uh, heeding to what's going on with them and not just telling them to shake it off or let's go get an ice cream because we don't want to talk about the difficult stuff. Like, really taking that time out to talk with the youth in, in your life and let them know that they are important, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, I agree. Because, uh, what is it, We three times the rate now, black teen suicide is up three times the rate. And I know, you know, I know some personally. Um, I had a cousin who, uh, you know, she hung herself in the garage. So, and this was recently. But uh, only what? I mean, young, man. And, you know, we, we keep thinking like, man, what, what make you do that? Right. And I had another family member. He went in the garage, older guy, you know, double barrel. So this thing is escalating. Yeah. There's something going on here, and we, we need some serious help. And uh, I think I was, me and Heather, we was, you have to queen up for? No. Yeah, you need to check her out. We got to get both of y'all with her for real, man. Because Queen of Four, she touch on a lot of these things. Uh, she do a whole healing retreat. Yeah, and then. Safe. Yeah, and she got a she got a presentation she did on the seven negative men that you would meet. Mm. And like uh, you was talking about, like like Kiki was saying, not all the guys is bad, but she talked about the seven negative men that you would meet in your life. And the, well, one of them was like the captain, and he was that dominating one. He mm -hmm. was that one, if you try to step out of line or try to step or try to grow, he get threatened by you growing. Yeah, yeah. And then his next move is to now assert his power over you physically. Yeah. 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 Abusive. That's mm -hmm. the captain. Mm -hmm. You need to really check her out, man, because she get off into it. Then she teach the women how to identify these men. Right. Because what you will do is you will start if you don't if you don't if you don't get out of this toxic relationship sort of vibration or this rhythm that you're falling into, you're gonna pick up the next one and the next one. Yeah. Not because you're looking for the same thing, but <laughs> your guard is down and this is familiar to mm -hmm. you right, and you right. fall into the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what she was talking about. So the idea is now is put the guard back up. Yeah. Cause you see, you could come from one of these bad relationships in your home and, uh, but you will meet this person and there's something about them. You'll say, man, they, something about them remind me of, uh, uh, you know, the bad, the other cat that was doing the bad stuff in the house. But you will see the good things, but that gives you that thing. Your guard is down now because there's a familiarity about yeah, it. Yeah. And now you went back at the same thing. Yeah. And a lot of these people dating the same people. They'd go from guy to guy. Oh, They'd right be the on. same dude. Yeah, yeah. Same. The same guy. Because you know? like, it's like you said, that's what they know. That's what they know. They already familiar with it. So their guard is down. And, uh, man, I, I know a lot of them like that. I know some of them in their 60s. They do the same thing. Nah, I could work with him. You know this dude on drugs, right? Nah, he already right, he a good dude. See, everybody got potential because yeah. everybody is God. Now, I got my spirituality is more of a comedic belief, so I go back to almost like the ancient Egyptians. But everybody here is like a everybody here is a representation of God because we all just drops in the water. We just it's, it's it's like the ocean. Then you separate the ocean into these drops. Now we got so many drops in this glass right here mm -hmm. but this is still part of that same cycle so everybody has potential but yeah. you can't look at that you gotta look at really where is this dude at where is he going so but uh that's where we at i got it i got it but um that's i think that's really what we want to talk on there that's that's all i wanted to bring to that
but I'm going to read this too, and then I got one more question for you. Okay. You hit up on some deep stuff. Again, this is WRFU, Urbana. Uh, WRFU is an open forum for ur urban champagne, Urbana champagne community. Views expressed and those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU, Urbana. Thank y'all. I had to read that disclaimer again. All right. Okay. All right. Now we want to know what's your future, man? Yeah, you got a lot. You don't have to say you everything. Give us something. That Give you, us some. What you want to do? What you want? What you want to go first? The book, the clothing yeah. line. I don't know. It's so much. Um, mm -hmm. I got my hands on so many different things, and yeah. I serve in ministry. Okay. Um, so I'm taking a break on schooling. Um, mm. because it's very very stressful. School will um, put you through it, man. man. And so, you know, I was, I was, I was in my last stages of my master's and writing my book, and it was just so much stress. And so, um, that's why I really I sought out a counselor because I was dealing with anxiety-like symptoms, and it was just everything was just too much, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but in regards to my future, I'm just, I, I want to, I want to be a whole person. Mm -hmm. So I want to Damn. be. I want to strive this year. I really, you know, I have been working towards all these accomplishments mm -hmm. and I've accomplished the MSW and I got the business and I wrote the book. And so, and so mm -hmm. what do I do yeah. when mm -hmm. I did all of that mm -hmm. and I'm still not happy? Yeah. Did all of that yeah. and still in a, yeah. in a low place. And I didn't really know why. Um, I finished my internship, you know, and so I just had time to rest which I needed, but I would just go in and I'm being transparent and I would just mm -hmm. go in and out of crying and just want to stay in the bed and can't even, don't even have no energy to really do nothing. And I'm like, you know, feeling angry, like not really being myself. And I'm like, God, why am I feeling like this? You know? And I, and I'm, I recognize I put like a whole lot of energy to everything that I'm doing and everything that I was doing. And so that's why, you know, I'm good on the, you know, on the, you know, accolades and clapping and the, mm -hmm. the degrees, like I'm straight, like, because at the end of the day, it don't make me. And so that's why I was like, when they said, tell you about yourself, like I'm doing a lot of different things, but who is Ariel for real? Like, mm -hmm. what do I contribute? You know, what am I going to contribute? And so, um, <clears throat> y'all, I'm just, I, this in my future, um, I have other things I want to work on in regards to social work. I'm extremely excited because um, I did get a new job offer, and so I'm excited to walk into that and work on and, and become a licensed clinical social worker mm -hmm. after my um, uh, supervisory hours. But um, mm -hmm. for my future, I'm going to really be the person I talk about being. I'm going to really be free. I'm going to really, you know what I'm saying, um, be totally healed and mm -hmm. and happy you know and not a situational happy i'm gonna have you know i'm gonna have joy so you say you wasn't happy huh what i mean man we was just we and it's weird you touched on that because i was just telling heather about uh you know the story of buddha mm. not so much okay it's deep, deep, man. It's deep. the buddha he sat under the bodhi tree mm -hmm. so as he sat up under the bodhi tree he got visits from the five daughters. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the whole story of the Buddha was he was a um, he was a uh, he was he was a prince. Wealthy. Wealthy prince. And he had a beautiful wife and everything. Yeah, so is. he walked away. And he he sought out different type of spiritual spiritual and religions and different things. He got involved with one religion where they were not eating, you know, they were fast. Mm -hmm. That didn't really make them happy. He got involved with another religion where they would that one where they would take the whip. I can't think of it, you know, and, and punish themselves. That didn't make him happy. Mm -hmm. So finally, he he sat and he just sat and meditated for a while, and then. Uh, it was actually Satan and his five daughters, so they mm -hmm. they came to visit him personally. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> when they came to visit him, you know, each one of them represented a desire that yeah. he wanted in his life. Yeah. You know, like don't you want these beautiful women and everything and all that? And don't you want that? So eventually, he got to this higher place where he didn't want nothing. Mm -hmm. 
mm. he found his bliss. Yeah. He said he didn't want nothing. He said he, he, he was happy just being him, just yeah. being that. He reached that state, that enlightenment. And that's what the Buddha mean, the enlightenment. One. So, Kiki, you know about it too, though. Yeah. You know. So, it got to do with he reached this state of, uh, I guess you could say, being a whole person. Because he closed his mind. He closed his mind. See, it, it, yeah. it's, it's another fable, right? Yeah. Going on with that. It's, you, got, you got the uh, Egyptian king. He called one his he called one his uh, court jesters, and uh, he said, uh, "What will make me happy?" He said, "Okay, we're gonna do this. Take an eye out, take one of your eyes out." Mm -hmm. So he took one of his eyes out, put it on the scale. He said, "Now we're gonna put a fourth of your gold on the scale and switch weighed the most." Mm -hmm. So they put the gold on the scale and the eye. The eye weighed the most. Mm -hmm. So they said, we're going to put some more of your gold on the scale and weigh the eye. They put some more of his gold on the scale and weigh the eye. The eye weighs the most. Yeah, yeah. So he said, well, I'm going to teach you this, King. Go get all your gold and put it on the scale. And we're going to see if your gold weighs more than your eye. So put all the gold on the scale and his eye still weighs the most. He says, now I'm going to show you something. So he went and got some dust and put the dust in front of the eye. And the gold weighed the most. Because as long as your eye can see stuff in temptation, mm -hmm. you're always going to want it. But if you can close your eyes and, and communicate <coughs> and communicate with yourself and get an understanding of yourself and leave the worldly things alone, yeah. that's when you find your true happiness and your true success. Yeah. That's good. But that's one of the good fables that go along with that Buddha story. Because Buddha, yeah. Buddha had everything. He had. If you read his book, he had everything. Yeah, with everything. Satan. And when Satan, brought that, and when Satan brought that desire to him, the same thing with Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Jesus did his 40 days, was it 40 days before night, and mm -hmm. Satan bringing everything to yeah. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus was the only perfect man that ever right. walked this earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he understood his, the world desires and wasn't his riches. Right. Once you understand that your riches come inside yourself and you're rich with yourself, that's when you can define success. Success. When you said a whole heart, a whole person, I told Tiger to ask you, what is a whole person? Yeah, and we was going to get into that, man. See, that's deep. Yeah, yeah, that's deep. See, a lot of people say things, and like the little words be so personal, but like a whole person, what is a whole person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what would make you whole? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. What would make you whole? <laughs> you got so much going on now. I mean, yeah. what's... what's what is it now? Just so let me just talk about my history. So being a teen parent at fourteen, I heard a lot of "This is it for you." Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, I had to prove them wrong. So I got my associates and I got the bachelor's and I got you know and I and I'm going exceeding above and beyond what they said I could not do. You know what I'm saying? So I was self determined uh, to not only prove them wrong but to say I was worthy. You know what I'm saying? I could have the best of both worlds because you know they say if you're gonna be a mommy, you gonna just be a mama. Mm -hmm. You know you can't have a mama and a career. You can't do your you can't mother and have your passion. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I came from. And so in regards to being a whole person, I am still in search of that. You know, I'm seeking to go higher in God and develop um, a deeper, more intimate. That's why I said love God intimately, a deeper, more intimate communication with him so I can hear him clearly. Um, I remember a time that I was obedient to God. Um, and I did exactly what he told me to do, exactly when he told me to do it. And there was no joy like that. Um, mm. And so I, I feel like... Um, it's, it all starts with God because he, you know, he is within me, you know, his presence is with me. So I feel like if I, um, and y'all, I serve in ministry, like I, I just was ordained a minister in training oh, really? and I told my pastor, you know, I didn't want no title. And I told him I didn't want to be ordained a minister because I want to go to seminary school and I want to study to show thyself approving, you know. And I always, when, when God sent me on missions, I'm just like, I don't want to, um, like when I was coming up here, I was praying. I'm like, God, I just want to be a good representation of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect, but I just want people, when they see me, when I speak, I want them to hear you. I want them to see you. And so I feel like if I, you know, um, if I just kind of solidify that relationship and, you know, he has reassured me a thousand times, but just get reaffirmed in that relationship um, because I've been 
um, because of, like I said, because of all the energy I put into everything I was doing, I feel like, you know, I had to be stay in the spirit. And I feel like now that I'm, I just been acting out in my flesh and being, being angry and then, you know, not having no self-control and that's not who I am. And so, um, I feel like if I just take the time that I'm supposed to with him, you know, I take the time with everybody else and I told God, I'm going to take you off my to-do list. I don't talk with you for five minutes, check, you know what I'm saying? It's a constant relationship and I, I give a lot, a lot of people my time and I give my time to a lot of other things mm -hmm. and so I just feel like if I if my focus is if I you know if I refocus myself I will be a more whole person deep yeah mm. so you you take time to reflect you do a lot of reflect oh my gosh <laughs> but listen 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 to you listen to you talk right and I mentioned I mentioned it early in, in in the show you can get tunnel vision in all type of ways mm-hmm and by listening to your conversation and the thing that you got going on, you still seem like you tunnel vision because but if a person listening to you right now, mm -hmm. they think you whole. Because you got all the good answers. Mm -hmm. You got you can hear in your figure of speaker, you got a, a sweet spirit and it come out wholeheartedly, you know what I mean? Like not like deceiving. Right. You know, it coming out like the truth. And by me just meeting you today, I'll say you whole. Yeah. Now, I know something too about people. In yeah. General. Break them down. Yeah, if I, if I wanted to get them started, you know, break it down. Most people are having a conversation with themselves mm -hmm. when they're talking with yeah. you. Yeah. 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 You're having a That's self good. conversation That's right good. now. Good. Yeah. Am I right? That's good. Am I right? Yes, sir. I know it. See? See, I, and, and the, you know, when you listen to people, sometimes you don't know what you know until you speak it. Mm -hmm. And then now, now she actually, she's actually going to go home and listen to this. She's going to play this back in her head. I know you are. You having a, you having a self moment right now, really. Because I, you know, I, I get how, I get how people talk. Cause, and, and I, and, and I'm going to prove it to you, man, because you have a conversation like, with somebody there after a while, they go right into what they want to talk about. They having a conversation with themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you just there as a reflector. <laughs> the Egyptian had like the soul and the spirit, mm -hmm. the ba and the ka. The 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 ba was your soul. The ka was like the reflection of the soul. He had worked like a reflection. So that's what they doing. You like a mirror. You bouncing off this. You she bouncing off these ideas and these concepts. She is now reaffirming to herself. This is what I'm about to do. Yeah. 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 Stay on that path. I mean, yeah. So, and you got to yeah. do that. That's what you're doing right now is right. It's not that you just, it's not that you're giving out um, information that you're not following. You are now resetting the brain, in a sense, to go up on this path again. Let's get ready and do this. And, yeah. uh and, and now, now you're going to fail. Everybody do. Yeah. Because that's yeah. part of the growing process. Yeah. If we don't fail, how are we going to grow? Yeah. So, you know, you got to take the good with the bad with this thing. That's the yin and the yang. So we got to have the yin and the yang. But, uh, yeah, you you own it, man. Trust me. I don't want to ask your age, but I'm just curious, man. <laughs> you gotta, I'm 27. You're 27? I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I, just when I turned 27, I did a... Um, a tw 27 testimonies of how God has been present in my life. And wow, it, it really man. blessed me. Well, you um, speak like somebody your age. Well, you 27? Yeah. Wow. You know when you... You know, go okay, ahead. you got five more developments you got to go through. You about to go through a second transformation. You got five. It's five stages of consciousness. You about to hit the next. At round 30, 32, you about to shift. You finna go through a shift, man. You right on the cusp of a shift. That's why you like you still growing. So you just coming out of one phase. That first that first stage, that's your emotional side. Mm -hmm. That's why I was out of control. Yeah. Now you about to gain control there at this next stage. You know about the five platonic solids. I know. I don't. I don't know other. So, but you, I, I but never, you know how the brain yeah, works. Well, brain yeah. develop in the same way because right. you got five stages that's happening. So by thirty thirty two. She's about to hit this next stage, man. And y'all, everything that you, everything that you now know, is gonna become dwarf. 
And then there's another stage you're going to hit. After you you got to break it down to it, though. I'm you know, trying, man. I don't <laughs> get deep. You get deep too but deep. I'm, I'm trying not to go. Okay, how do I break it? You got to break it. Because I know she own it. Right here. But I know she own it. She own it, and she don't know she own it. She don't know where she at, and she don't know how much she did. And she did this at 27, and still uh, uh, she was a, a, a teenage mother. Except when you walk in the spirit, though. That's powerful, man. That's See, what I'm saying. Y'all got it, man. Y'all, this lady is powerful. I, 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 I hope you don't understand. When you walk, Ooh, when you walk, it's man. different between walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. Yeah. yeah when you man. walk in the spirit, you do things that you never thought you can do, and yeah. you don't like where that come from. But at, when you walk in spirit, the spirit the is true. Yeah. Yeah. At 27, with the kid, uh, man, I'm talking. And then went through the bad relationship, a divorce. Man, man you amazing, man. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus. But you know, when you were speaking to me, I, I was. I was getting emotional because you're right. I'm just, you know, Man, I I, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just, I'm just talking, talking about what I, um, what I already know. You know what I'm saying? And I know God loved me, but I feel yeah. like, um, and like he said, it would, it would seem to be I'm a whole person. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I still struggle with me sometimes. Well, that's what's going to happen I, now. With that yeah, thirty, yeah, that yeah, next yeah, stage. You're gonna go to that stage. That's why I want to ask you this question. Long. I go noticed ahead, you keep saying God love you. He but do you love that. yourself? So I tell people all the time, I do. I do love myself. I, I struggle with me. And that's why, I, that's why I said I want to empower queens to love themselves in totality, their flaws, their past, everything. Um, but I, I really do. And I tell people all the time, you can never fully love yourself until you love God and know how he thinks of you. Because our level of love is, is extremely lower than his level of love. But at the same time. How can you truly love God if you don't truly love yourself? Mm. It always starts with him. No. So it does. He gave you the freedom of choice. Mm. Right, right, so right. You so got for me, so for me. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for me, <clears throat> it's in mm. him that I live, move, and have my being. And so it always, it al I always talk about God. It always turns back to God. Oh, mm -hmm. Ariel, you did a great job. No, it wasn't me for real. You know, it was God working and moving through me. And it's like... Um, we struggle in our flesh daily. God is God, right? He sent Jesus down in human form and flesh form, but God is him. He want, He He created us because he wanted some people to love on. He wanted some people to love on him back, right? But it's like he thinks, he calls us his children. He calls us royalty. He calls us a priesthood. He calls, you know what I'm saying? He calls, he he truly loves us, right? And while we ignore him and while we don't think nothing about him because we're doing all right in our flesh, we're doing good, you know what I'm saying? Then we go back to God like, oh, I'm going through stuff. We don't ever just talk to God when we happy, when we got it all together, but we go to God like he's a problem solver, a void filler, a heart fixer, and he can do all those things, but he desires relationships. So for me, I could never love myself because, like he said, I self-reflect. I could never love myself without him. That's what I'm saying. Without him first, period. Mm -hmm. That's for me. Because the way I think about myself and the way I reflect on things and on the things I've been through, I'm not deserving. I'm not deserving. Why do you say you're not deserving? I'm yeah, saying, tell me that. Why do you think you're not deserving? In, 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 flesh, in, in flesh form, in, in my flesh. Deserving of what? Yes. Of love. Of, or, or deserving. Love from who? Or deserving. To, just, I'm just, in general. Or deserving of things, right? So I, And so it's like, I give all this good love to other people and I speak to people mm -hmm. highly. But then when I, I'm not going to say right now, but in the past when I have looked at myself, I've struggled to empower myself and love on myself as I did others because mm -hmm. we are the only ones who know what we go through and what we've truly done and what we've been through and what we struggle with. And so to me, myself, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I always, you know, and that's why I say I just, just learned that excellence is not perfection. Like I'm never, ever right. going to be perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and I'm still okay. Like I am still deserving. I am still worthy. Right. And so the only way I could walk into that, into the you good area, like for real, like you for real, like, you know, you deserve Everything that you're giving out to everybody else, you deserve that same thing reciprocated, and I can only receive yeah. that from him. You know, you was talking about love don't hurt. It's not supposed to, but the only person who received love in the manner in which he was hurt and betrayed and beaten and crucified, he did that for us. That's love. That's how I can love myself because the way I saw how much he loved me. He sacrificed for love. Right. He didn't hurt himself. Love no, no, didn't no. hurt him. He, he, he sacrificed came because he loved you. Right. And then the same thing, 
you do love yourself because let me tell you why because you God never, loved me first. You never get no before you before you found God. I listen to your conversation. I'm not trying to you know be Buddha. Or, no, you can't. But, come but on, before you. before no, before, you, be, before yep. you found God, mm -hmm. before you found God, you never gave up on yourself. That's right. So that's the love you have for yourself. Like when Tiger was saying earlier, you having a conversation with yourself. Mm -hmm. like what you do? You're not really talking to us. You having a conversation <laughs> with yourself. Yeah. Because if you didn't love yourself. And the way you describe things that went on in your past and whatever you went through, you wouldn't be doing the things you're doing now. Right. right? So right. you love yourself to understand the love that God has for you. That's, that's the understanding that we got to get get going. Because right. if you don't understand yourself and love yourself, how can you truly get all your love to God? A person that you have never seen, right. you never seen, you never met, but you see yourself <clears throat> every day. Right. You got to pick yourself up every day. Mm -hmm. So... If you I don't love David. yourself, how can you love God? It's deep. Kiki went way deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you went in there. Look went in there. It. Yeah. I'm just saying. But, she for, keeps but saying. for me, it's, a, it's, it's biblical and it's scripture. Like, I love and because he loved me You first. keep saying it's biblical. The Bible tells you to love thyself, then you will know your true God. But you know. That's in the Bible now. I read know, the Bible uh, too now. You know, uh, <laughs> you know uh, uh, in the verse 2, it's a verse 2 that they say, ye are God. Exactly. We are God. See, yes. because okay. each one of us is a reflection. Yeah. Right. It's only one.